company housing. There used to be a coal company store, basically just a solid old coal camp. Um, and the mine is still there at the end of the road, but now it's a surface mine. They don't need the workers to live there anymore. And uh, it's the road through the town. It's essentially now just a coal haul road. Um, and they bought everybody out and kicked everybody out because they supposedly found a 10-foot seam of coal uh, up on the ridges. And their plan is to wipe Stone Egg off the map, literally. And looks like they've gone a long way towards doing that. By the time I returned in the spring of 2008, Stone Egg was being demolished and the neighboring forest cleared. The amount of coal dust everywhere continued to intrigue me. Could you uh, talk about the dust and stuff? Oh yeah, they're, um, they load trucks up with coal and then drive right through the town, often overloaded, so the coal is up on top. Um, in addition to the trucks, you get dust off the trains and just sit there idling 24 hours a day, uh, the coal trains. Um, and all that dust is blown over into the community. In a community like that, you could get black lung without ever stepping foot in a deep mine. One community deeply impacted by the dust is in neighboring Russell County, where a coal processing facility blows over tremendous amounts of coal dust into their holler. Tell us the story. You can hear it right there. You hear what I'm saying? That's, that's 24 hours a day. And the truck's run seven days a week. And they got a sweeper truck, but they've had him there since June. And I got a video I can show you in here of uh, January the 8th this year and the 11th of this year, what the trucks look like when they're coming through there. Okay, right there. This was pressure wars three times last year. The 927 07 is when they steam cleaned the carpet. And it wasn't a year old. Yeah, you can feel it. Feel it on there. Yeah. Feel, feel that how hard that is? <laughs> that's, that's eating into that. And if it stays here long enough, it will eat come down into that. See, this is up on this hill right back here. Mm -hmm. We're right down in here. We'll see how it comes? Yeah. It's all day long. There's her bottom of her little feet, bless her little heart. She was out in the yard just a second. There's the playhouse. It's the baby's playhouse right there. See, all that's nothing but coal dust. I got a thing here, it come from a doctor from one of the babies, that she's not allowed outside if the wind's blowing because it causes her to have such bad ear infections, the dust does. It's a few of the names I figured out in about an hour and a half the other night. And this is people that's had cancer or died of cancer, and uh, some people has died of heart attacks or something on this page right here. And this is not nothing. Um, if we'd take a day, a time, a, a thinking, you wouldn't realize how many names we would have. And uh, this is my uncles and stuff, but uh, this is different. This little girl here, Sarah Kaiser, died 32 years old. I believe it's the age she was. And this was Andrew Dotson, that was one died at 34 with cancer. And Doug Johnson, he was my friend, died the year before last, he died with uh, heart, heart failure. But they all lived right up here on the hill right here. Yeah, I could feel about five pages of that if I had somebody to hit me. I would soon learn the entire Appalachian region is a well-known cancer cluster with incident rates higher than the United States average. Many communities have similar cancer lists, and knowing how small these communities can be, I was astounded by their length. Due to the lack of wealth in the region, many cannot afford medical insurance and are limited in what they can do, often relying on free clinics. Many residents cannot or do not want to move out of the area due to local ties. As such, many sell with the coal company. Others find themselves fighting against settlements made a generation ago. The, the insurance company from here has offered one family a thousand dollars to settle. One family they offered a pressure washer. Uh, you, got, you got a pressure washer. They bought me one yet when we first when we first moved here. I mean, they seen their daddy and them trying to fight for it, and got forty some thousand dollars for a whole community. But this man up on top of the mountain here, he owned a big egg farm. He got the most out of that right there where he owned more land than everybody. But like I said, my dad wouldn't take nothing because he was working in the mines at the time. That's, that's the biggest thing you hear is you can't win. 
And that's like my dad and mom said, Tim, you can't get nothing out of that bunch. So they're going to do what they want to. They got that's the money. You can't fight them. And if they get that power plane in down there, St. Paul's going to be just like his place when this bunch runs down. They won't have a thing for it. And they was talking about, well, bringing in all kinds of jobs. My family's lived here. Well, my dad was here but when this power plant first started. Couldn't get on. He had to go in the mines 40-some years ago because he couldn't get on. My brothers, none of us was able to get on down here. And that's, we've lived right here at that. And if we can't get on with that, well, no, we can't get on down there. Down there. And they talk about, you know, bringing jobs in. Who's a getting them? Somebody's getting them. We ain't. Later, I attended a public hearing in a Wise County school about the proposed power plant. The fire marshal wouldn't let us in because the room was full. Rumor was that the local coal company sent a notice about it out with employees' paychecks. I took this opportunity to explore the building and ask a few people about education in the area. I walked by the career board and was rather shocked by the blatant focus on surveying and mining engineering careers. On the side seemingly thrown up there was a poster for Harvard. Even the customary scenic motivational poster instead related to mountain top removal mining. In the library, most of the books I saw were rebounded and some even dated back up to 100 years or more. I found out that the Wise County School District was so strapped for money and plagued with declining enrollment that they are currently moving forward with consolidating together nearly half a dozen schools. Some speculate another reason why this is is that there may be a plot by the coal companies to mine coal under one of the high schools. As I traveled through the region, I couldn't help but notice how many schools neighbor mining sites, exposing them to constant noise and coal dust. The worst case of this is at Marsh Fork Elementary School in West Virginia. This school lies in the shadow of a coal silo 150 feet away and 400 yards away from a 2.8 billion gallon slurry impoundment dam, one of West Virginia's largest. As explained earlier, these dams have been known to fail. If such a failure were to occur here, the school would have mere minutes to evacuate. Up the road from Marsh Fork Elementary School lives Larry Gibson. Larry is a longtime homemade activist who has refused to sell his family land of 220 years. You see, his land is worth around $650 million for the coal reserves below it. After he surveyed his own land and found out that the mine companies were encroaching on his property, he forced them back. Ever since then, he has had to defend himself and his land from constant abuses as he works to educate the public to tell his story and to show the extent of what mountaintop removal is. This gate here is known as Hell's Gate. And I make reference to it as the division between life and death. Over here, we have some life. I can give y'all a pocket knife. You can survive over here. I can give you anything you want over here. You're going to lose some weight. Whatever happens, you keep going. 